Last week, I did a video on how I got into procurement consulting. And at the end of this video, I asked you if you would like to see a mini-series about how my friends and colleagues got into procurement consulting. So based on the likes and comments I received on YouTube and LinkedIn, it seems like you guys would like to see more of this. So today we will see my colleague Dominic. Let's get started. Dominic and I go back 15 years. Both him and I learned procurement from Martin. We did a couple of pretty cool things together and the most recent one was a trip in and out of Saudi Arabia to give a speech there and I still have very good memories of chatting with Dominic uh, waiting for our 3 a.m. flight back to Frankfurt. So Dominic, tell us a little bit about yourself. Actually, when I studied at university, I had only little to no touch to procurement. I did a lot of financial studies, I did a lot of business studies and some lean. And even when I applied for my first job at a consultancy, I haven't thought about procurement. Actually, I thought about the big strategic task, making organizations move from today to tomorrow. But it turned out differently and I'm very happy. Actually, the first case 15 years ago I was staffed on was a procurement case. It was a large procurement transformation for a global procurement department where we sourced through their whole spend while we made the procurement organization uh, moving to the next excellence level. And thinking back of the last couple of years where I stayed within the procurement space, I come up with five reasons. First, it's result driven. There are clear end results at the end of every procurement engagement. Then it's cross-functional. Procurement is only successful if you engage with other functions. Third, although it's operations, procurement is a very strategic task. Fourth is about digitalization in procurement. Today's procurement department's digitalization plays a significant role. And fifth, it's about learning. Let's start with result driven. My first job in consultancy was in a boutique uh, consultancy and actually all of our cases were value-based. So your bonus depended from the results that you were ma make for, for the client. So you would do everything in order to make savings happen. But also beside that, having clear, tangible, measurable targets at every project is a huge, huge factor for me in order to, 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 to have a pleasant work. Secondly, it's about cross-functionality. When you're working with an OEM, you engage, for example, with the engineering department when you look at their direct spend. When you work for a bank and you look at the IT spend, it's the IT you're working with. So it's a huge number of functions you're connected with when you're working for different industries within the procurement space. And there's a lot of be behavioral understanding and psychology needed in order to convince those people in the right way. Then, yes, it is a very strategic task because you engage with suppliers and you need to think through from the beginning to the end very carefully how you interact with those. So you need to think like a game plan on what are the points you would like to make, what arguments you expect from the suppliers and how do you like to counter react to it. And this game theory based thinking makes it very, very interesting when you work in teams and prepare those negotiations and make it very strategic. Then it's about digitalization. Everyone is speaking about digitalization. But there are in procurement two particular things from my point of view. It's on the one hand the efficiency question. For sure you can implement RPA in order to make the onboarding of suppliers more efficient. But what's even more interesting is to increase the effectiveness for, of a strategic uh, uh, buyer by applying artificial intelligence like our AI negotiation coach which gives a recommendation what lever to pull in a, in, a, in a certain procurement situation. And it's, it's, it's a very systematic and, and transparent way and it makes really people, people move from what they have done in the past successfully 
to new roads and, and, and therefore delivering additional results. And last but not least, it's always about learning. Actually, when I look back, I had at the beginning of my career bad experiences with e-auctions. Now working with a colleagues together who has a PhD in auction and is, is very well known in, in the area for auctions, I tried it again very successfully and, and I'm very happy of having the opportunity to learn on a, on a daily basis. Dominic, thank you so much for sharing your story. So I will leave your contact details in the description down below so that people can reach out directly to you. Okay, now it is your turn. Would you like to see more of this mini-series? Are there any specific topics we should cover? Let me know in the comments down below and I will get back to you within 24 hours. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye.